I have been uh, with Novartis for 14 years and I have been uh, the CIO or leading a data digital and IT function for about one and a half years, um, which is a combination of digital, data science and AI and an IT function as such. How we contribute? Uh, in principle, innovation happens in two different ways. One is more a, a process-oriented approach, uh, which is really addressing the fundamental systems that we have in place, um, which is usually more a long-term play. Uh, so where you really work together with the business on how can we improve productivity, how can we change how we work today. And then is more the experience-based approach, which is really how can we make impact quickly, uh, make a change the way we work, uh, and there we really look into the outside world of what are others doing, um, what is actually happening around us in our private life that we can leverage and make, yeah, make innovation happen. Um, and that's technology innovation. Then it's of course on a business innovation side is you invent new products, you, you obviously partner with other companies to find new drugs. Um, and yeah, there is always a combination of us integrating uh, other companies. Uh, and there is an other element where we, in principle, uh, with our research organization, find new innovations. Over the last years, Novartis has been always an early adopter of data science and artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence exists since a long time, uh, but over the last years, the technical uh, evolution has been very significant. Um, and we, of course, also as a company have realized that uh, where AI can work, traditional AI, uh, and where also new technologies around AI, around uh, large language models, enable us obviously to, to make yeah, use of these technologies and also see where it could apply in our business. I think in most areas we are in par with or similar to other companies in the pharma industry. Obviously other industries might be more advanced. Um, being in the pharma industry, you have a lot of regulations that you need to follow, including, for example, GMP, good manufacturing practices, and so on. Um, we have certainly a leading position around uh, digital finance, interestingly, um, an area that we have been investing very early and have made very good progress. But we also see now in the research area, uh, we have uh, very good projects that really uh, helped us already to have first successes. Obviously, we as a company, we have many, many data scientists, uh, which maybe formerly were also seen as statisticians um, or clinical researchers. So I think AI in the end, or data science, is a tool uh, to help our associates that have all the knowledge and experience to work more effectively. Um, and when you compare this with other companies, uh, we did an assessment earlier in the year, you can see that in certain areas, yes, we publish potentially even more papers uh, based on uh, leveraging AI. AI. But uh, in the end, what matters is the outcome. Uh, so do we find a drug uh, quicker and faster? Can we actually also develop it faster so that it gets faster to the patients, which is the most important ultimately? Um, and yeah, certainly uh, we are uh, one of the leading companies, the uh, first mover. But uh, in the end, um, I think the, all companies are embarking on a journey and uh, certainly there's a lot of talent in the market that will also grow um, uh, learning with these technologies and become a more AI first and really understanding that technology end to end. So we, uh, as a, being such a large uh, company, um, one of the largest in the world, we have of course also our own data centers, uh, our own environments. Uh, but uh, as almost all uh, large enterprises, we have uh, um, embarked on a journey to become cloud first. So we leverage uh, the environments uh, provided by large uh, hyperscalers, um, where we can in principle um, use the best of bread technologies from all of these companies. Um, we are heavily invested with AWS and also with Microsoft in this space. Now, we, um, for high performance computer environment, uh, we of course also increasingly leverage, uh, let's say, moving from our environment uh, to these environments. Yeah. So, we conduct uh, clinical trials in principle based on the product. Uh, based on the patients, and that can be in Switzerland or can be in other locations. 
Um, when we obviously conduct clinical trials, we follow all the protocols required and we highly secure the data uh, to make sure that it is only used for the intended use um, as such. Uh, IT security is not specific necessarily to the type of data. So we have to ensure as a company end-to-end -to, -end to be secure. Um, so we have uh, implemented all the standard security measures that large companies implement and we are leading in this space. We have a very large organization of more than 400 internal associates that secure our company. We have security operation centers operating out of various locations 24-7. Um, I'm proud to say also over the last many years we didn't have any major security breaches um, and yeah, we'll continue to ensure because this uh, area evolves quickly and uh, we have always to stay on top of it. Now, when you mentioned particularly research data and other data, of course it is um, sizable in nature, uh, but that doesn't change also if it's cloud or on-premise, uh, you still need to make sure that uh, your partners uh, ensure all the security measures as, as per the best uh, in class products. Enovartis has data scientists across all the business functions, hundreds of them. Um, so we have a great talent base to build on and you need to have that internally because you need the internal knowledge where you connect and understand what does it mean for the the drugs that we develop. Um, but we of course also leverage partnerships uh, with strategic uh, tech companies like Microsoft uh, and also AWS uh, because it helps us also to explore technology in the end uh, that we can reuse and don't need to reinvent ourselves. Um, with this partnership we had already many good successes um, and of course as technology evolves we hope obviously that that will extend further. But in addition, we also partner with many consulting service providers uh, or software providers um, that might be at scale or also niche, where we have to see um, where, where, what's possible nowadays so that we can scale it later on. Uh, we go into partnership with other companies, um, also work with other companies together to build new products that we can uh, then jointly build as an industry. So when we speak about AI, we distinct in principle between traditional AI uh, and rather the large language models nowadays. Uh, with the large language models, our approach is in principle to leverage what has been, these models have been trained on. Uh, so therefore, uh, these, these large language models, they can scan obviously your data, they can help actually giving more interactive answers, but you don't necessarily train them on the data. Yeah. Uh, but but then you have more the traditional one where you really try to improve uh, the way you, for example, run a clinical trial, uh, efficiency, uh, the way you can generate efficiency, uh, finding new drugs where AI can help us explore doing so. Um, so I think it's a mix of both. In, in, in certain areas, it's a better to rather use the models that are pre-trained and in certain areas, uh, we, we do this ourselves uh, together with also partners. Um, I can give you two samples uh, that might be of interest. One is uh, in the research area. Uh, we have a product built or be in the process of further extending it called uh, Generative Chemistry, so chain chem, uh, so which really helps us to explore and find uh, new molecules and synthesize them. So that is of course the success of these models. We will see obviously only longer term because uh, it takes up to 15 years to uh, invent and find a new, let's say, molecule that in the end leads to a real product that is sell on the market. Uh, then in another area um, would be something called AI, protocol AI, which is more about how AI can help us to run clinical trials more efficiently. From a company perspective, uh, the core of what we do is to find new molecules and of course to have drugs that help our patients to live a healthier life. So therefore our focus has to be there. Um, it's, a, it's the unique selling point, obviously, of a company, like a pharma company like Novartis. And that's also where we focus on. We have identified six, seven core ideas of how we want to leverage AI in these areas. But we see actually the benefits across the whole value chain. So we see also AI very beneficial in the manufacturing 
environment, we see it for technical research and development, we see it in finance even, um, or even um, human-centric around our own employees and how it can help obviously ident identify ways of, uh, of working better as a company. Mm. Um, so it's not specific to one area, it's in all areas, uh, but of course wherever there is data at scale and AI can transform and speed up the discovery process quicker, it's a big benefit. Yeah. Um, when, when you look at uh, AI, it's still a relatively new technology, especially now with the new capabilities, and you need to do a lot of proof of concepts. And as may, like many other companies, we only see uh, trying it out with real data if it works. And we had many of these proof of concepts, so it's important also to understand where can it create the biggest business value, and therefore focus on those but also relatively quickly stop certain uh, initiative if you see it doesn't. So it's all about uh, prioritizing, taking qu relatively soon decisions of what scales and what not. Um, and in the end, of course, also put uh, your investments where it uh, creates the biggest values for the company. We have, of course, uh, a whole function called ethics, risk and compliance. Um, and this applies for anything we do and, but also for AI. So we have a risk-based approach where we analyze every new use case if that is a good fit for AI. Um, and we analyze, of course, also um, could it take any wrong decision? Um, could it be biased? Uh, and many other reasons that AI might not be a good use case. So this is part of the ways of working in Novartis and not specific to AI. But with AI, of course, we learned that there is new things that we have to look at and, and we have a function that supports us. It's hard to predict uh, over a whole decade. Um, but what we know, of course, is that AI will have impact in the way we work. Um, we see this today already with commercial products becoming available. Um, some of it that like, you might also be aware, like ChatGPT, we have in the meanwhile our internal version, uh, just to make sure the data stays with us. Uh, and it, it just helps in many, many ways already to make our day-to-day -day easier. And it will become integrated in any kind of product, commercial product going forward. Um, so if be it the salesforce.com platform or Microsoft Office uh, technologies or whatever uh, all the large uh, enterprises use, uh, will, this have, will have this simply embedded. So therefore, for us, I think it is all about um, making use of that in our day-to-day -day work, kind of enabled automatically by these tech companies, while we have, of course, to continue to explore where we can implement and leverage um, uh, these technologies within our own software development processes, but then also partner with other companies uh, to build products uh, that the whole industry can use, because in the end, uh, we are not a software development company, we are a, we are a pharmaceutical company. Um, and we, we want to use as much as possible products that have proven in the market um, that will help us to, exp yeah, to develop products uh, quicker. AI will certainly transform the industry, uh, or all the industries, uh, by uh, enabling to work much more effective and productive. The decision in the end is still with humans of what is the right molecule um, and will it work? Uh, but, and is it safe, right? But ultimately, uh, for us, when we, we looked at our processes, we saw that in research, um, great opportunities uh, to discover potentially new molecules and make that more effective, um, to have much more effective uh, processes around clinical trials or also in manufacturing processes um, where we just see a lot of data at scale uh, that we, we can leverage. Obviously, all researchers, um, all associates in the world is they are used to current ways of working. And I guess this applies to all companies in the world. And as these technologies become available, all of us learn with it. And we become more savvy in using it. We understand better what works, what doesn't work. Um, so from, I think from an outlook perspective also, I think we will be, the models will get better, 
we learn better how to apply it. Um, and then, of course, one innovation builds on the other. I think uh, we will see probably an acceleration of new drug discovery, as we see already today, many new technologies um, helping us to find new drugs. Um, and I think it's a, a very positive things for the patients because the likelihood of uh, finding new drugs is, of course, increasing even for rare diseases. I believe in the end uh, to find a new drug you need to have the right science and expertise in a company and um, it's core to, to a pharma industry and every large pharma company to have this talent. Now um, certainly the tech industry um, will be able to help us optimize certain parts of the processes. Um, like supply chain, as a sample, or you could uh, think of how we engage with uh, healthcare professionals. Will they be able to compete uh, directly? Then, in principle, they become a pharma company, so they become a direct competitor. Uh, is that when you look at companies nowadays, um, do they want to be so diverse in covering, uh, let's say, multiple uh, business areas? In, in, in a tendency, I would say not. Right? Um, there was this. There is, has been many, many, very large companies that are were doing everything. If you look at Novartis, we have also become a, recently a very focused company. Uh, so uh, we have just recently um, we are just separating from our generics business exactly for that reason that you that you focus and that you focus in innovation in medicine.